So as you guys know, I have been avoiding the whole trainer thing for, well, a long time. And there's a few reasons for that. The main one is space. For me, living in Balmain, the biggest issue is space. Moving on this year and obviously moving away from the retail thing, effectively cleared up a lot of space here at the office. And I want to use that and I want to use it with a trainer. Here's the thing, I don't really know where to start with it. There is a whole heap of stuff out there. And I thought really what I might do is just share my journey with you to choose a trainer, choose a spot, see what accessories we need to do, and get on it and see what it's like. All right, sound like fun? Kind of indoor interactive fun? Let's start really with going in and having a look at what trainer to choose. Alrighty guys, so we're gonna kick it off in the elite world. Now just for the sort of, well for consistency, I'm gonna stay in the elite brand. Now you've got plenty of others, obviously you've got Wahoo, you've got Cyclops, you've got a million different, and they all do offer these different types of trainers. What I was certainly most familiar with was this classic trainer thing. And I, and I did use one back in Ireland very briefly in those deep dark winters. And that was something where really what you did is you plonked the rear wheel into the, the trainer and it gave you uh, the ability then to put some resistance on the rear wheel and you could set the resistance to quite a consistent um, setting. And as you changed gears, uh, you were able to go up and down. It's super effective, um, quite small, some of them quite loud. We kind of then moved along to the Smart Trainer here. Now the Smart Trainer is the setup where you'll probably see it a little bit more consistently where the, the rear wheel is taken off. Now the great thing about a Smart Trainer is it, was, it enabled you to really set a power output, dial in the kind of workout that you really wanted. And that's something that was a big step up from the standard trainer. I think where my head is at is to go towards the interactive trainer. And these are the sort of things you've seen in the last sort of five and six years. So with the interactive trainer, seemingly what's going on here is you are getting different resistances. So sort of combines in with whatever the, the the software is that you're using, the Zwift, Train Road or anything like that. So the resistance goes up and down depending whether you're riding up or down hills or whether you're drafting in and out of people, all that kind of stuff, really immersing you completely into the whole system. Given I want to go full trainer spec, full trainer setup, I'm going to go the interactive option. The next question is how, where, and the accessories. This is, this is the devil, the devil that's always beaten me in the past. So put a call out to the guys and said basically, what do I need? What are the essential ingredients to make a sort of home setup work? And the key things seemingly are fans, as many friggin' fans as you can, a mat, and well, some sort of stand, a few stands around the bike to sort of be able to put bits and pieces on it, phones, all that kind of stuff. Oh, the other thing with the fans was a remote control. So obviously, if you're gonna have multiple fans, you don't wanna blast them all straight off the bat because it'd just be freezing cold. So, let's go get them, hey? When the time is right, I mean, if I'm being totally honest with you, I think one of the factors that's kept me from, from starting doing this is, okay, so I never set up a permanent place to do it, to, to use the trainer. So for me, going and using the trainer then was always going getting the trainer, going finding something to put the iPad down on, getting the bike on, taking the wheel off, setting it up, rear jug. It was always probably like a 15 to 30 minute process, which doesn't sound like a lot, but if you add it both sides, it would always just result in me going, Ugh, can't be stuffed. The other thing was assessing that, okay, I spend most of my time at the office, but I was never willing to set up a place here to do it. I think this is the key. This, this is, I was never gonna do it at home. I'm tr I always try and keep home as much as possible, oh, as much as feasibly can be with us, less cycling-y. Um, and I know we do have the weight sort of program and stuff at home, but like it, it's nice to kind of have that a bit removed. So I think working out where you can spend the most time is clearly gonna be something that's beneficial to me. God, I hate building stuff though. So bad at this. Do you 
guys know I'm massively into tech, right? That does not seem to go into the juncture of smart trainers. I am clueless when it comes to smart trainers. So what I do know about this is it is the Elite Suito trainer. It's a smart trainer, it's a direct drive, provides resistance, blah -de blah -de blah But from what I understand, the good thing about this number one, especially in an apartment in close to this, is it is very, very quiet. I don't know if this goes for many smart trainers, but like, I reckon that's pretty good as far as uh, like maneuverability and all the rest, which is probably not that important when it comes to smart trainers. But we'll set it up and we'll have a bit of a chat about this. But we're looking good here, guys. We're looking good. When I had these any trainers set up at the, the garage, the worst thing about the garage was it was completely lopsided. And so anytime you'd actually start riding with a bit of intensity, you just get blah, 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 blah. So flat surface, clearly already making a difference for me. So this has got the Campy Free Hub on this side, quick release. Obviously you can run a disc through this. It comes with that adapter. And yes, you can of course run a, can, a um, Shimano or SRAM 12 speed or 11 speed over on this side. Plugs in just here, pretty, pretty simple enough cord setup. And if we have a look around that side, it's, um, yeah. As far as smart trainers go, I reckon pretty compact. Without doubt, I reckon from my perspective, the ability just to have a bike permanently set up. I know that's, particularly ridiculous to have two bikes, but if you do have the capability of leaving a bike on a trainer permanently, that's what everyone seems to say to me, is that if you have that ability to just literally see the bike set up on the trainer and go stuff it, I'm just gonna go do it. It just again takes out those sort of barriers of entry to end up getting on the thing, which I think is gonna be a big role for this bike. Okay, grand reveal time, guys. And as you know, the biggest thing I wanted to create was light and air. And I think that's kind of what I've done here. I'm close to the window. I've got that stool just to my right where I can put my phone. I can control the remote controls. The wheel went in really, really easily. Um, so that's slotted in no problems. And then I've got the screen out in front and the fans are, well, they're at sort of lower than eye level, but I can play around with that as we go along. Obviously got a power meter, got power meter pedals, right? And this trainer has a power meter in it as well. So the question then becomes, what actually dictates, how do you actually use this? Do you use the, do you take the readings of the, the pedals? Do you take the power meter of the, the smart trainer? So I realized this is probably smart trainer for dummies, but guys, you can't forget, I've never done this before. So I was, I was confused as to what would happen. Like what would I do when I start riding? So there's lots of options here. I can choose the resistance. I can choose simulate a route. Well, that's interesting. Select a workout, control it from a different app, choose a level, choose a target wattage. Oh, I like that. We'll just choose a generic resistance level. Now I'm gonna jump on guys and I want to explain in really simple terms what is going on here. So I've decided to basically have the head unit, my Wahoo on this particular circumstance, control the smart trainer. Now as you saw there a minute ago, I was flicking through some of the different options you could do. What I've decided to do is choose a workout from my head unit. It was actually a workout that Dan had given me from today's plan, which automatically uploads to the Wahoo. And that then controls the actual smart trainer. So when the resistance changes, so let's say he's given me 400 watts for a certain period of time, that will Will, um, be controlled by the head unit onto the smart trainer. Now you don't have to do it that way. The other option with these smart trainers is you can, can connect them to an app. So you could connect it to a Zwift app on an iPhone, a Trainer Road app on a iPad or an Apple TV. And what would actually happen there is the app controls the resistance. So you could do a workout 
uh, on one of those apps or one of those Zwift races, and it's the app that's actually talking to the smart trainer. I know that might sound like quite a simple sort of thing, but for me, I wasn't quite sure how that would play out. Now, you can still record these things on the onto your head unit, but uh, effectively, it's the app controlling it. Now, in my particular circumstance here, I just watched a bit of a TV and kept myself interested. I think uh, what's going to be super interesting here is, you know how I go on and on about my weakness being putting power out on false flats and downhills? And this is what the trainer is. It's just that, it's that sort of 360 degree pedal stroke, isn't it? And it's really interesting. I can uh, I can certainly feel it in in muscles that I think have been a bit dormant. So there's clearly going to be a place for this. I'm just so stoked. It's like it's here at the office. Like I'm going to have a shower now and get back to work. And and that's uh, that's pretty lucky actually. I've got to be honest. I should have done this ages ago. And look, this is going to be the biggest advantage for me, you know, squeeze in a session like that is going to be fantastic. Look, the next step for me, I'm going to follow this along over the next couple of months, but the next step for me is obviously go fully interactive, get into the Zwift thing or the trainer road thing. The thing that really interests me is that mimic course thing. I would love to try that. So yeah, I think there's something in this, guys. I am really, really interested in your thoughts. I'd love to see some pictures maybe via Instagram of your trainer setup and give me some more tips. What else do I need to make this a more feasible kind of setup for me? Thanks again, guys, for watching. Uh, really, really looking forward to what's coming up because what's coming up is exciting. Promise. Alrighty, guys, see you soon. I did that and I made the sound effect. I was like, oh, mate, it's not, but it doesn't make that noise. So, yeah.